Hi everyone, it's Kunihiro. Thank you for coming back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make karaage, a Japanese fried chicken, step by step. So let's begin. Alright, here are today's ingredients. So here I have 600 grams of bone-in skin-on chicken thighs. We usually use chicken thigh meat to make karaage because it's the juiciest and the most flavorful part of a chicken. And we prefer using ones with the skin on, because the skin becomes very crispy once deep fried, adding extra crispness to your karaage. And for marinating the chicken, I use salt and black pepper, 2 tablespoons of soy sauce, 2 tablespoons of sake, 1 teaspoon of sesame oil, 2 cloves of garlic, and 10 grams of fresh ginger. And for coating the chicken, I have one large egg, 70 grams of cornstarch, and 70 grams of all-purpose flour. Today, I'm using cornstarch, but you can substitute it with potato or tapioca starch. The result will be the same. Alright, so let's start with chicken preparation. The first thing we do is to wipe off the moisture on the chicken with paper towels very well. It will reduce the unwanted smell of chicken, also, the dried chicken will absorb the marinade better. Next, we are going to debone the chicken. So first, please identify where the bone is. And make initial incisions on the left side of the bone, running from the top to the bottom. Make sure to run the tip of the knife along the bone, so you won't lose much meat. At this time, I'm slightly pressing the side of the blade against the bone. And once this much bone is exposed, rotate the chicken and carefully detach the meat from the other side of the bone using the tip of the knife. Then slide the blade along the bone while pressing against it. Once this much bone is exposed, Slide the blade under the bone, and cut and disconnect one end of the bone. Then stand the bone up, and cut and disconnect the other end of the bone like this. And you'll always find the cartilage here, so please cut it off. Then check if there are no small bones left on the chicken. Please remove them if you find them. And as for the excess skin, you don't have to cut it off. But sometimes it has lots of fat on the edge like this one. In that case, please cut only this part off because the fat will not render even after deep fried. You don't have to be nervous about removing all the fat, but I suggest removing big and visible ones. Okay, this is clean enough. So that's how I debone and clean up a chicken thigh. Next, we are going to cut the chicken into big bite-sized pieces. So after deboning, You'll notice the middle part, where the bone was located, is thinner than both ends. So please make a first cut at the thinner point. Now the chicken is cut into two pieces, then you'll notice one is a little smaller than the other. So please cut this smaller one in half. It's a kind of big piece, it weighs about 30 grams. Then please put this cut chicken into a bowl, and cut this bigger piece into three equal size pieces. Cutting this way will make all the chicken pieces almost equal in size, which is very important because equal size meat will cook evenly in the oil. Thank you. 
By the way, please lay these cut chicken pieces flat like this in a bowl. It will come in handy in the next step. Next, we are going to season the chicken with salt and black pepper. So, please sprinkle a few pinches of salt and black pepper over the chicken. Since we laid out the chicken flat in the previous step, you can easily see how much salt and black pepper you are adding at this point. The amount of salt and black pepper will vary depending on the amount of chicken you have at that time. So, please lay out the chicken evenly before adding salt and black pepper. Also, I suggest adding a little more salt than you would usually think was enough. If you add too little salt at this stage, your karage will be bland. Even though today's recipe uses soy sauce, it is mainly for adding aroma, not for adding saltiness to the chicken. So please season the chicken well at this point. Then grate two cloves of garlic over the chicken. It will add a nice garlic flavor. But please don't add too much because it will easily overpower the entire dish. So stick with two if you are preparing a similar amount of chicken. Then grate 10 grams of fresh ginger over the chicken. It will add a refreshing ginger flavor. However, for the same reason as garlic, just a little bit of ginger is enough. Then add two tablespoons of soy sauce. It will add a delicious soy sauce aroma. And add two tablespoons of sake. It will reduce the chicken smell, also soften the meat and keep it moist. And in the end, add one teaspoon of sesame oil. It will add a hint of nutty flavor to your karaage. And mix it well and let the chicken absorb the marinade. Once you don't see any more liquid left in the bottom of the bowl, that is the sign it's mixed enough. So cover the chicken with plastic and let it rest outside the fridge for 20 to 30 minutes. We'll bring the chicken to room temperature while marinating it. Because the cold chicken will cause undercooking. So set this aside for now and let's move on to the next step. Please get a separate bowl and put 70 grams of cornstarch and 70 grams of all-purpose flour in it. Then mix it well. We'll use this mixture to coat the chicken. Some people use only starch for coating, but I believe a starch and flour mixture makes karage much crispier and stays crispy longer. Okay, 20 minutes have passed. Your chicken will look like this. Now, break an egg over the chicken and mix it well. This egg will act as a barrier between the chicken and the cornstarch and the flour mixture so that the moisture of the chicken won't mess up the crispy coating of the karage after deep frying. Next, we are going to coat the chicken with the starch and the flour mixture. So, please arrange these items on the counter. Starting from the left, the chicken first, the starch and the flour mixture next, and the dry plate last. Please take a piece of chicken and coat it with lots of starch and flour mixture. Then shake off the excess powder and put it on a dry plate. If the skin is coming off like this piece, attach the skin to the meat first and put it on the powder. Then shake off the excess powder while holding the skin on the meat. After coating, your chicken will look like this. Now let it rest for a couple of minutes and let the powder absorb the moisture on the chicken. Doing that will make your karage even crispier. So while waiting for the chicken, let's heat the cooking oil. 
please get a large pot and fill it with cooking oil up to 2 cm. You don't need lots of oil for cooking karaage. Then turn on the heat to medium and bring the oil temperature up to 170 degrees Celsius. Once the oil is getting hot, please turn down the heat to medium low. Otherwise the oil temperature exceeds 170 degrees very quickly. By the way, your chicken will look like this at this point. The starch and the flour have absorbed more moisture from the chicken and the surface is moister than it was minutes ago. That is exactly what you want and it's ready to go. Right, the oil is getting ready. Let's check the temperature. So, to check the temperature of the oil, first, wet the tips of your chopsticks with water and wipe off the water with a paper towel well. Then, dip the tips of your chopsticks in the oil and look at the bubbles come out of your chopsticks. At 170 degrees, you'll see many teeny tiny bubbles come out of the chopsticks like this. You'll see a lot fewer bubbles at 160 degrees and at 180 degrees, you'll see bigger bubbles. So now, gently put half the chicken into the oil. If you put in all the raw chicken at once, the oil temperature will drop dramatically, causing the coating to come out soggy. So please make sure to deep fry the chicken in two batches. And we are going to deep fry them for 4 minutes. After you put the chicken into the oil, the oil temperature will drop to about 160 degrees. But it will soon come back up to 170 degrees on medium low heat. So please don't turn up the heat at this point. The ideal temperature during those 4 minutes is between 160 to 170 degrees. So I suggest adjusting the heat between medium low to low heat. After 2 minutes, please turn the chicken over and deep fry for 2 more minutes. And 4 minutes later, please take all the chicken pieces out of the oil and put them on a cooling rack. At this point, the core of the chicken is still slightly uncooked. So let the chicken rest for 4 minutes and let the remaining heat cook the chicken entirely. By cooking slowly with the remaining heat, your chicken will stay juicy. While resting the karage, Please clean up the oil once and deep fry the remaining chicken in the same way. So after 2 minutes, turn the chicken over. And after 4 minutes, take them out of the oil and let them rest for 4 minutes, just like the first batch. And after the second batch rested for 4 minutes, turn the heat back on, this time medium heat, and raise the oil temperature to 180 degrees Celsius. I'm going to check the temperature with chopsticks again, this time at 180 degrees. You'll see many bigger bubbles come out of chopsticks like this. Now put all the karage back into the oil and deep fry for about a minute until they become golden brown. The purpose of this double frying is to crisp up the coating and add a beautiful brown color to it at the higher temperature. Also, this double frying method allows you to serve more pieces at once. Please move the chicken around to make the oil temperature even, so that all the pieces get brown evenly. After 30 seconds, please turn the chicken over and deep fry for 30 more seconds.
and after one minute, take the karage out, shake off the oil well, and put them on the cooling rack. and drain the oil from the karage for one minute. Finally, put the karage pieces on a plate. I always pile them up like this. Then please garnish them with a lemon wedge. And in the end, put a little bit of Japanese mayonnaise on the side and that's it. Your delicious chicken karage is ready. It's very juicy on the inside and super crispy on the outside. Alright, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. So if you did, please give me a like and leave a comment below. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye bye.